Hi, this is Dennis with Second Chance Tackle. I'm back on that box of reels that uh, we previewed earlier with that uh, Abu reel. Uh, this one came to us from Tony, a, a viewer of ours. And uh, I believe this one's the Shakespeare Sigma. We're going to take a look. Came in pieces and parts, kind of like a uh, uh, project that uh, got stopped halfway or something. We got the spool. Here's the main body of the reel. It's a Sigma 60 Shakespeare. Drag knob. I'm just checking to make sure we have all the parts at the moment. And it looks like we have the, uh, the pieces for the rotor assembly. I'm just going to see if we can't. Right, we have the pieces for the rotor assembly. So let's uh, let's go ahead and do this. I told Tony I would uh, I would take all of these. I would uh, try and put them back together. He assures me all the parts are there. They started and then. Uh, couldn't finish the work so looks like we got a reel that's working here but let's go ahead and take that off we don't have a uh, the anti-reverse mechanisms this one is this one is on wrong I think uh, we should be okay started then we're missing a couple of side plate screws I'm assuming that's what's in the box here For some reason one of these is not out so let's go take that out I just put a, a drop there of some Penetrating oil, just to uh, make sure it shouldn't freeze to anything because this is a plastic case. Probably just put that back in to hold it on. So Shakespeare had a whole variety of these reels. Um, this one's called the Sigma. You might find that you have a big water. You might find that you have a tiger. Uh, you may find that you have the Alpha or you may find that you have the Xterra. But for the most part, the reels are very similar in nature. There are some differences. Uh, well, I guess this one wasn't a part because it's a mess still. There are some differences. Usually it's in a number of ball bearings. And uh, the, the gear ratios. But other than that, the designs are very, almost hauntingly similar. And Shakespeare, as they note in there, they're uh, advertising, and that Shakespeare has been around a long time. Shakespeare was founded in 1897 by a fellow named William Shakespeare Jr. And uh, it wasn't named after the folks from uh, England. It was simply his name. And he invented the level wine feature on a fishing reel after uh, trying to figure out how do you do this for a fishing reel if you can do it for a, a uh, spool of thread you should be able to do it for a fishing reel and that's how Shakespeare became founded he was the inventor for that so we're going to take this off to clean this up we've got a lot of old grease on there as you can see in the picture the bearing on the main gear here it, is having a tough time coming off. This probably got pressed at some point with the handle. I'm not going to pull it off. There's no need to. It's spinning. All I did was float um, fishing reel oil on there to, to lubricate it. You have to be careful with reels like these. Parts are not available. And rather than trying to be a hero and pull the bearing off for the sake of pulling the bearing off, if it's functioning, leave it and just uh, clean up around it. So we pulled off the axle shaft. You'll notice a couple of things as we're doing this. I have a plastic glove on my hand, latex glove, to keep that uh, hand away from the grease. We have a parts tray behind me where all the pieces from this are going. Some of the bigger pieces you can lay off to the side. You won't lose those, but certainly this, the screws and the like. Uh, you want to take care of, because if you lose them, again, parts are not available for these reels. So it's uh, your loss. You lose the reel if you lose a, a small piece. So take care when you're disassembling the reel. Put all those parts and pieces in one position, one place, so you know where they are. All right, we've got pretty old grease here, but it's coming up. It's cooperating. This reel has two ball bearings in it. It has one on the main gear on the drive side. And it has one up top on the uh, pinion gear. It has uh, a bushing on the other side. 
So again, there's, there's some variations in the reel, but the, the base design is very similar in nature. Some folks have tried to swap parts between various models. Sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't. So if you have, there's a good example of the grease we're trying to clean out of here. Uh, if you have something like a missing case screw, chances are you got a chance with that one. If you have a, uh, a broken gear, maybe not so much because the gear ratios do change. Okay, just a little bit more cleaning up on this one. Let's get all that old grease out of there. It does appear to be a fishing wheel grease. It just appears to be very dirty. So this is the brass bushing we saw on the Xterra that I took off, took apart, I guess last week or whatever. That the um, that one was a plastic bushing, not a not a metal one. Now, if you saw anything unusual, if you saw that this was really jammed with dirt or anything. You can pull this shaft to complete the cleaning by removing these two screws. We might as well just do that just to show you. There's no rush on this. So I'll take this out. I'll show you the bearing. These I'm going to lay right on the table rather than put in the parts tray because the pieces are going to go right back in. But you can take the collar off this. That's what's holding the pinion gear down. Notice that you have the flat spar part of the collar going up to the anti-reverse and you just pull the whole shaft right off. In this case the bearing should slide off. You got a little bit of dirt in there so as long as we have it off let's just pull that off. And then it's just simply a matter of re-lubing this. And I grab my brush, grab my fishing reel grease. I'm using a, a pen precision reel grease for this. And since it's dry we'll just uh, Make sure that we cover most of the teeth. This is the pen precision reel grease that I'm using. Use a fishing reel grease. Doesn't have to be the um, same manufacturer as the reel, uh, but it does have to be a fishing reel grease. Interestingly enough, Shakespeare is part of the pure fishing conglomerate that has pen in there. So I guess, though it's not uh, pen grease, it is uh, their sister company that manufactures that. While I have that out, I'll just do a little bit more cleaning. I'm going to call that pretty much done. Okay, there's a little bit of grease on the crosswind block here, so let's try and get the old grease out of that. That's why the paper towel is sitting here on the deck. Check the teeth along the way on the crosswind gear. Make sure it's all in good condition. A little bit more, just some grease on the teeth before the reinstall. So the paper towel kind of grabbed there and then a little bit on the back. Now the outer rim is the only thing that rides on the back so you don't have to uh, don't have to throw grease into those slots there. It's just a waste of grease. And then a little bit on the stud there before we reinstall. And when you go to reinstall put the stud on the crosswind block low. Okay we're going to put the main gear back in. We've oiled that bearing. We remember that the collar's flat side goes up against the anti-reverse there. And we're going to grab the screwdriver and set those two screws that we had on the deck. And before I tighten that one down, I want to make sure I can get the other one into the, the hole. Sometimes because of the way that this is loaded, it could be askew and then you have to loosen it up anyway. So once you get both of them in, then you can tighten them down. What we're doing here. I'm going to check the main gear now. Same thing is, are the teeth clean? Are they clear? And are they not chipping? A little bit of grease onto that. You don't have to cover every tooth. A little bit onto the back here. Make sure that you do the same thing with the crosswind teeth on that gear that are going to drive the other. And then we can go reinstall that. And then we can bring this one. We've cleaned the channel. So let's just get some grease inside that channel there. That's where the stud is going to slide. There we go. 
you know, again, you don't have to glob it in there and, and uh, hold it anything more than just that. And then you want to put that over the top of the, the piece here. Okay, we've got some missing parts here. I think this is probably what was driving him kind of crazy there. So this is an eccentric spring. It belongs over the collar of the gear and it sits inside the groove there. So as you're reeling, you're fine. And then as you go to turn it off, this should kick back. So I'm thinking what we have here is a tight anti-reverse. So let's go ahead and pull the clip. Not always an easy thing to do. This is an E-clip. You want to be careful when you do this, you don't want to shoot this clip, which is why I was taking my time, but that's the E-clip we were working with, right in the parts tray so we know where it is. I'm going to grab this and make sure we get this nice and clean. And I just shot that spring, so I'm going to go find it. Okay, that happens to the best of us. This one went off when I pulled up too hard on the other. That's all right, we'll reinstall that. Just like that, put that into the cage. Now we got uh, what appears to be a little bit of gunk and grease, which is probably what's slowing this down. So let's take care of that. I just see all that stuff on the inside came out. That's fine. Let's clean that up. Put a little bit of grease on there. Okay, so that's what we want to make sure that we have nice free flow, which we weren't getting before. Okay, was that E clip then? Get that back in the slot. And sometimes you need to use a, a needle nose pliers or something to pull in on that. We want to make sure we're nice and free still. And we got our little eccentric. Give it a test. So we've got that working again. Put the override in. Test up. So that's how that gets set. Okay, let's go put the rest of the reel back together then. Since that's already working there. We can reset the piece, go into our parts tray here. Find the rotor nut. Probably a 15 millimeter. Let's give it a check. It is. Give it a spin. Make sure we're operating the way we are. That's good. Okay, we can go back and install the pieces then. Start with the cross line block. We've already greased these. Main gear. Actually, we can go ahead and put the gear and the block in. That's pulled out. You want to do that from behind.
opening gear axle. I'm just feeling a little bit of junk on that axle, so let's use the steel wool to clean that up. White uh, lube. axle in and thread that into the cross wind gear now. Yep, when we push that down we had a little bit of junk come through the, uh, the pinion gear so let's get that off. And we have the screw for the hole tight. And we can close this side up. I see we have the side plate screws. Let's grab the side plate. I'll put a little bit more oil onto the, the bearing from this side. Close the reel up. Four screws that he left me. And this is one of those I always caution against using a mechanical screwdriver on. It's a plastic case. You don't want to bind this case or get yourself in a situation where the uh, case fails. It's already got a little bit of a wobble to it. That's kind of interesting. And that may be because we only had the one screw in there for a while. It may have got near a heat source. I don't know. Kind of hard to tell these sometimes. Two more on this side to go. Bottom ones. So this is a 60 size reel. This is great for uh, surf casting. It's a good general purpose reel. Surf casting, you can drop it from a pier, use it on a boat. It has multiple uses to it. Salt water, deep lakes, great lakes, all of those uh, We'll work on this. The uh, recommended line sizes on this is 15 to 30 pound monofilament, so it is a bigger reel. And uh, it's one that, uh, with the right, uh, has a pretty nice setup with the ball bearings, the two of them, as opposed to the one we saw in the XTR. And we're just a little bit tight, and that's probably the result of this being a little bit over tight. Let's go give it a, a test here, see what we got. There we go. And we have an instant, instant anti reverse stop. Okay, so the only thing left on this then is to um, grab the set screw here. It's also in the box. And we have the little lockdown. Lockdown goes over. Set screw goes in that hole to hold the lockdown down. And we have the click ratchet. And we have a couple of shim washers for the spool. Now those shim washers adjust the the feed to the spool itself. So if you find that you got the the spool gathering line too much up top and not enough below. You have too many washers on. If it's too hard, uh, too much below and not enough up top, you don't have enough washers on. And like Mama Bear and Baby Bear and, and Papa Bear, if it's spooling evenly across, then that's the case of you got it just right. So we're just spinning a drag washer here. So there you go, Tony. That's the uh, that's your reel. That's what uh, makes the difference. There, we uh, 
Looks like we had a little weak spring on that uh, anti-reverse. And I guess we cleaned it all up while we were at it. And now we've got a, a nice turning reel here. Let's make sure the bail works. Put a little drop of oil onto the bail and onto the two seams. And we're going to call this one done. So there you go. The Shakespeare Sigma long cast reel. Ready to go to work. Well, I hope you've enjoyed that. If you did, please like this uh, video. And more importantly, please subscribe. I, uh, that's what keeps my channel going. So this is Dennis with Second Chance Tackle. Thank you for watching.